how are you? Chronic fatigue syndrome, also called ME slash CFS, or myalgic encephalomyelitis, I'll use CFS, and fibromyalgia, I usually say fibro, are similar conditions. But there are key differences too. Fibro is considered one of the many central sensitivity syndromes and is categorized as a disease. And CFS is considered a central sensitivity syndrome, but is also considered a disease. Both have pain, fatigue, and cognitive dysfunction. But today, we're going to dig a little deeper into these two diseases. Researchers say that CFS is tied to the immune system. There are abnormalities. Fibromyalgia is also tied to the immune system. In general, fibromyalgia is considered more painful than CFS. Both conditions affect multiple organs of the body, which are referred to neuroimmune or neuroendocrine immune disorders. ME stands for myalgic encephalomyelitis, which means muscle pain with brain and spinal cord inflammation or neuroinflammation. Fibromyalgia is a disease that's also considered to have neuroinflammation. It causes pain all over with fatigue and other symptoms. And the name means muscle and fibrous connective tissue pain. Research suggests that CFS could be caused by infections like Epstein-Barr virus or immune system changes, which causes autoimmune-like qualities. A dysregulated stress response system increases inflammation like from a car accident or having surgery. Cells don't produce enough energy and it tends to run in families. Like fibromyalgia, each person has their own set of causes. In fibromyalgia, the suspected causes are hormonal changes like pregnancy, menopause, or hysterectomy. Stressful events like premature birth, childhood trauma, or a car accident, for example. Also infections, chronic pain that results from an injury in a specific area of the body can lead to widespread pain. A disease or autoimmune condition could also lead to fibromyalgia, like lupus or rheumatoid arthritis. Chronic sleep deprivation, like from a sleeping disorder, or a mood disorder, like depression or PTSD, for example. And fibro also runs in families. In addition, new research is showing more evidence that fibro has immune system changes or autoimmunity. Time will tell. As I've said in past explanations about fibromyalgia, a patient with CFS or fibro may experience many of these potential causes over their lifetime and together will evolve into one of these conditions, but it's different for everyone. In CFS, hormonal changes are not considered a cause, but it is in fibro. Also, Chronic pain is not the main symptom in CFS, it's fatigue. CFS does not show that sleep deprivation is a cause or that a mood disorder could cause it. And I'm not sure if a mood disorder causes fibromyalgia. Most research dates that depression and anxiety usually 
exists after fibromyalgia develops. What's your experience? In CFS, the symptoms include fatigue that doesn't go away with rest, and some are confined to total bed rest. They have unrefreshed sleep, an increase in symptoms after light exertion, brain fog, chronic body-wide pain in some people, orthostatic intolerance, which is dizziness when standing due to an abnormal drop in blood pressure, flu-like symptoms with a low-grade fever and sore throat, and many sensitivities such as an intolerance to allergens, difficulties with noise and light, temperature, food, medications, or chemical odors. Some patients may experience dry mouth and dry eyes, have muscle twitching, recurrent infections, anxiety or irritability, irregular heartbeat, and shortness of breath. There are overlapping conditions that some with CFS may have, like depression, endometriosis, IBS or intestinal disorders, PMS, tinnitus, which is ringing in the ears, and other symptoms. In fibromyalgia, patients experience chronic widespread pain, fatigue, unrefreshed sleep, fibro fog, and digestive problems. We also experience hyperalgesia, which is a heightened pain sensitivity, and allodynia, which is pain that shouldn't be painful, and paresthesias, which is abnormal nerve sensations like burning, tingling, or shooting pain. Other symptoms include headaches and migraines, dizziness, vertigo, or fainting, sensitivity to weather changes, humidity or temperature, sensitivities to allergens, intolerances to noise and light, food and chemical odors, muscle stiffness, abdominal cramps, indigestion, memory issues, bloating, anxiety or irritability, extremely painful periods, and premature menopause. They may also experience some overlapping conditions like depression, IBS, insomnia, interstitial cystitis, which is having a painful bladder, myofascial pain syndrome, obstructive sleep apnea or restless legs, and others. But here's the thing. You can have both CFS and fibromyalgia at the same time and many do. An upcoming study will take a look at whether fibro and CFS together is a separate disease. I look forward to reading that one. Because so many people are using complementary health therapies, Congress in the United States has formed the National Center for Complementary and Integrative Health to appraise treatments and determine their effectiveness. Put a link to that site below, but do your own research. You could be doing more harm than good. There can be serious side effects from supplements and they could interact with your other treatment in a negative way. And of course, talk to your medical doctor. Treatments for fibromyalgia are usually medication, therapies, alternative medication, supplements, and lifestyle changes. There are only three medications approved by the FDA for fibromyalgia, but many are prescribed off-label meds. Then there are new clinical trials occurring this year for some promising new treatments. We can only hope. I just wonder how much they're going to cost. Some patients with fibromyalgia use these treatments. Very little research is found on some of these. 
do your own research and talk to your doctor because there are serious side effects with some of these. I just want you to be cautious. The treatment for CFS has been inconclusive and some off-label medications help some like antidepressants, anti-anxiety meds, over-the-counter or prescription anti-inflammatory meds and sleep meds like clonopin, Lunesta or Ambien. Topical pain relievers like Biofreeze can help some. Cognitive behavioral therapy and graded exercise therapy could help, but these are only found to help a small percentage of people with CFS. Acupuncture, massage, yoga or Tai Chi, hypnotherapy and biofeedback could help. There are clinical trials also occurring this year for MECFS that could lead to new treatment options. What's your experience with treatments for CFS? This is a list of supplements that people with CFS commonly use, but confer with your doctor because there are side effects. Do your own research. That's the main thing. So I hope you learned something. I send you gentle hugs and support. Love you. Myalgic encephalomyelitis. Fibromyalgia is all, all myalgic encephalomyelitis or immune most research. But at